Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Uh, in this video I want to talk about a uh, anoxy filtration build by uh, Mark Walters. Uh, he sent me a long letter explaining his build, pictures of his build, how he did it, how he made his plenum. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> read you exactly what he says. And I'm going to show you his built and how he did it, so um, everybody knows. Anyhow, it says, um, uh, hello, Dr. Novak. I want to thank you for providing such a great method of filtration to fish keeping community. Sometimes simplicity and good science is just the best means to an end. After extensive research on my freshwater aquarium anoxy filtration system, I decided to build two freshwater planted tanks using your method. I am delighted to say that one of the two tanks has far exceeded my expectations. I did a new tank build, a 29-gallon freshwater planted tank using a plenum. I used an undergravel filter plate with the cut-down riser tube. Very low flow on the bubbler, especially a special grade kitty litter, fluorite red, and some normal inert gravel on top. So he used three different kind of uh, mediums for his substrate. I have between approximately four to five inches of substrate. The good news, within 45 days, the aquarium went anoxy. From the beginning, I understand uh, repetitive tests and nitrates. At the six week mark, I went from an average of 20 to 40 parts per million of nitrates to zero. I have conducted continual tests since then and still get zero nitrates. I have never done a water change, only top off. Success. One small detail I learned was that I didn't need to add any fertilizer to the tank. Apparently he'd been adding fertilizers to his tank. My plants and fish seem to be thriving. I started this build on October 1st, 2022. And uh, he says, please see the attached pictures. Okay, the first thing he started out with, as you can see, like I show in my aquarium, this looks like the Eheim uh, special substrate. Not substrate. It's something that you put in the canister filters. It's from Eheim. Uh, it looks like he had some left over. So he did the same thing I did in my build. He added this to the very bottom of the plenum since it's small enough that his uh, uh, undergravel plates will fit right over it with no problems at all. So this is a 29-gallon. A lot of people uh, will ask me, oh, should I get a 20 or 29? I always tell them, Get a 29. It's the same footprint. It's higher, and you'll be happier with a 29 over a 20-gallon. And I always recommend that. Now, this is your normal. It looks like uh, one of your Petco undergravel filter plates. Uh, I've used these. They're blue. They uh, snap together, just the two. You break these little pieces like uh, between the two pieces here to join them together. And you can see his uplift tube on the right side is very short. And, uh, basically, that's it. Uh, unless you're going to have a very fine substrate, you would put something over it. Now, as we look at this picture, I had someone comment to me, which I thought was ridiculous, but they said, oh, under gravel filter plates are expensive. You know, a long time ago, when you would make a brand new aquarium, uh, these were handed to you right from the uh, pet store you went to. And they would hand you a tank, under gravel filter. They'd tell you what kind of substrate you want to use. Uh, they would sell you the hang on the back filter or an in the tank filter, a light. Uh, these were just standard pieces of equipment along with the heater okay that's how they did it it was any of the old timers will tell you it, that's what you bought and I can't understand today where someone 
had made that comment to me that, oh, undergramable filter plates are expensive. If they're that expensive, what are you doing in the hobby? I mean, we seem to be a society now, which someone has made comment to me, we seem to be the kind of society that doesn't mind spending money, uh, four seventy five on a, uh, a cup of coffee, a mocha cup of coffee. We don't mind buying a thousand dollar iPhone or uh, Android phone. We don't mind doing that, but we don't want to spend twenty dollars on an under gravel filter. Doesn't make any sense to me. How could this be too expensive? Unless it was a very young person making the comment that they're paying for it out of their own pocket. But you have to remember back in the old days, uh, minimum wage was like $1.60 an hour. That was it. That's what you made for minimum wage. And if we could afford it then, because that's what's natural, that's what you had to do, or that's what was suggested to you by the aquarium stores that you went to or the pet stores you went to, um, Today, the price of an underground filter really isn't that expensive. And putting it in isn't that much trouble. In fact, that's the ambience of starting a new aquarium is planning out everything and getting everything ready so you can make the aquarium the way you wanted it, just like Mark has with his aquarium. Anyhow, um, I thought I would just add that in there. Then, then after he puts the under gravel filter plate in. Then after he did that, it looks like he put a ground cover fabric over the larger slots of the filter plate. There are no slots on these filter plates on the sides. So basically, you only have to use something, a fabric or something, just to do the very top. Simple enough. Screening material. This, is, this looks like something that you would use... Uh, for ground cover that's uh, permeable, you know, water will seep through it. And uh, looks like a pretty good idea. Apparently, with the substrate he wants to use, could be finer, so he doesn't want it slipping through the cracks. As we can see, he uh, now has filled the substrate, uh, the tank up, put it on top of the undergraduate filter. You can see the the different colors of substrate which he used, how he layered it, and nothing special here. That's why I say a 29 is better than a 20, because you'll still have, even after you put your under gravel filter and your substrate in, you're still going to have enough height. And the, and the other thing is, you're going to use the same lighting. Whether you buy a 20 or 29, it's going to use the same lighting. So you don't have to buy special lighting because the tank is deeper. Because after you make your plenum, you're going to lose some of that height. So the light you use for a 20 can be used on a 29. You're just going to like it better, uh, as you can see by his pictures, how he aquascaped it. And I would say, you know, he did a very good job so you can get more height. And here's his completed tank. Now, as we know, everybody starts out with a tank. As you notice, he's got your uh, hang on the back filter. He's got your heaters. Uh, you can't even see where the little bubbler is because it kind of disappears behind a plant. Uh, but you know, your basic equipment. This is, I would say, a basic aquarium, how it should be set up. A plenum. A lot of people say, well, if I use a plenum, do I really need a... Uh, uh, BCB and no if you use a plenum you don't really need a BCB as you see he's got his lights and everything now this is this is how most people start you start out one way and then by the time you end up the finished product completely changes from what it originally was okay I'm going to get to the second part of his letter he says now on the second tank I have a mature 40 gallon breeder freshwater planted tank using inert gravel and two large sponge filters. I use root tabs and easy green to provide the plants nutrients. 
I didn't want to break down an established tank to add a plenum, so I decided to try a canister filter with a PCB to provide anoxic filtration. I used the same kitty litter Walmart special grade unscented non-clumping and fluorite red that I used on the 29 gallon tank. I built the basket with a Walmart food container that I drilled a lot of holes in. It fit quite well in the Eheim Classic 350 canister filter. I simply added the canister filter to the 40 gallon breeder in the hopes that the PCB would go anoxic and my nitrates would disappear. I started this October 3rd and has been continuously checking nitrate levels. My nitrates average between 20 to 40 parts per million. Okay, he, he said that in uh, his first aquarium, so that must be normal. And I do a 40, 20% water change weekly. So he still has 20 to 40 parts per million and with a 20% water change weekly. To my dismay, I have still not seen reach zero nitrates with this setup. I'm not sure if I did this wrong. So please see the attached build photos and your thought. Well, what he did is he, he took a... Uh, plastic container and drilled holes in it and I highly recommended him to when I saw that I thought no that's that's wrong to, to buy one of the bags and I do show that on one of my videos that you can go on Amazon you can buy the bags and just make a bag that's probably the simplest way to do it you don't have to drill any holes all you're doing is buying a bag I think the bags are 12 by 8 I think they even make bigger ones but I noticed the 12 by 8 seemed to be a nice, good size. Uh, just go along, buy the bag, and then fill that up and put it in your canister. It'll be more open, no drilling of holes, no plastic containers to worry about, and it'll be a lot simpler. Uh, and, of course, then he asked, uh, he was curious to find out if it would work on saltwater aquariums. Uh, of course, it works on saltwater aquariums. That's that's not the problem. But uh, basically, that's that's what he was uh, asking me. If it, if it, uh, why the BCB basket he made and put in his Eheim was not working. Basically, once he sent me the pictures, all it was was a plastic container. He drilled a lot of holes in it, small holes. And uh, as you can see, either you need a bag or you need to make something out of this mesh that you're looking at where it's got just literally thousands and thousands of holes in it to allow the passage of water to go in and out. Um, like I had a container, just this one you're looking at, and it was, was running for three years, and I changed it over to a bag and when I took this container apart no blackening of the kitty litter nothing it was like the day I made it so we know then that no anaerobic bacteria was growing inside the BCB container here so that's what he's going to change he's either going to get a bag or have to make a container that's more open and put that in his Eheim, and I think he'll be a lot better. It uh, it's just one of those things, and patience will will pay off. Uh, in that case, but I thought I would bring this up about uh, Mark with the pictures he sent me. Didn't show you the pictures of how he made the container because it's just basically a a, um, a food container, and he drilled holes in it. And I, as soon as I saw it, I thought, ah, oh, that's not going to work. You don't have enough holes. You're going to have to put in, you know, maybe a thousand holes or something in that container. So it just didn't work. But anyhow, I did want to bring uh, this up. I want to thank Mark for his pictures that he sent me and his story. So we have one tank that's doing great at choosing the plenum. And the other tank, when he made a BCB, isn't doing so great. But... There could be a reason he uh, made the container not as open as it should be. So if you want to add a BCB bag or uh, uh, a mesh container, uh, you can buy the bags right off of Amazon. Nothing special. 
They're not that expensive. Like I said, get the, uh, my video shows, get the bigger hole sized. I think they come in four different sizes. Very small hole all the way up to the bigger hole size. Get the bigger hole size and the 12 by 8. And if you have a sump, uh, you can buy several of these bags. I don't know if they come in a package of one or three. or But anyhow, you can buy yourself several. Make them up and put them in your sump. That way, if you ever have to move them, you don't have a big mess. You don't have anything falling out of the bag. And then just put them back into your sump. Anyhow, I just want to show you this. Um, that there, Here's another person that made a plenum in BCB bags. Just to let you know. And uh, that's it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. It, it does help. Uh, bring in more people uh, so they can learn about the anoxy filtration system and how it works and uh, that uh, people should be learning that uh, under gravel filter plates that you buy to make a plenum uh, they're not that expensive and the requirements of making one isn't that big of a deal it really isn't that big of a deal why why people mm, just resist it I don't know so much they just resist it so much that it's like we can't have that but that's the way they are anyhow until next time this is Dr. Novak happy fish keeping